In this question, we have a sample of gas in a flexible container. It initially occupies a volume of 2.44 litres at a temperature of 275 degrees C and a pressure of 1.44 atm. Then the temperature of the gas inside the container decreases to 143 degrees C at a pressure of 1.26 atm. We're told the number of moles of the gas remains constant. So let's go through and label what we've got. We've got initial volume, V1, initial temperature, T1, and an initial pressure, P1. We also have a final temperature, T2, and a final pressure, P2. And in this question, we're trying to find the final volume of the gas, which is our V2. Okay, so let's fill out our work table here. This time we've got P, V, and T before and after. So our initial volume is 2.44 litres. Our initial temperature is 275 degrees C. Now remember, temperature has to be in Kelvin for us to use these equations. So our T1 is 275 degrees C. We're going to have to add... 273 to that to convert into Kelvin, which gives us a T1 of 548 Kelvin. So let's fill that in. T1 548 Kelvin. We're also given the initial pressure of 1.44 atm. Then we're given T2, a final temperature of 143 degrees C. Again, we're going to have to convert to Kelvin. So T2 is 143 degrees C. Let's add 273 to that to convert into Kelvin. That gives us a final temperature of 416 Kelvin. So we can fill that in now. For our T2, it's 416 Kelvin. And our final pressure is 1.26 atm. Awesome. So we've got all our known variables and we're left finding V2. So let's go ahead and look for an equation. Down here we have the combined gas law. P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over T2. So that's a combination of our other gas laws together, including pressure, volume and temperature. So let's write that down. We've got P1 times V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 times V2 divided by T2. So there's our equation. We're looking to find V2, the final volume. So let's rearrange our equation for V2. Now, V2 is currently divided by T2. So if I multiply by T2 on both sides, that's going to cancel out. V2 is also currently multiplied by P2. So if I divide by P2 on both sides, the P2 will cancel out as well, leaving just V2 on its own, which is what I want. So that gives me V2 is T2 times P1 times V1 divided by P2 times T1. So let's put in all our numbers there. So our T2 was 416, our P1 is 1.44, our V1 is 2.44, divided by our P2, which is 1.26, multiplied by T1, which was 548. If we put all that into our calculator, we're going to come out with a volume of 2.12 litres. So let's check that here, 2.12 litres. Awesome. Okay, so we've succeeded in finding our final volume. Remember, again, temperature must be in Kelvin for us to use this equation. So always convert into Kelvin if you're given a temperature in degree C before you put them into your work table or into your um, equation. Also, some of these questions may have one of these being constant. For example, if it says the sample of gas is in a rigid container, 
that tells you the volume must remain constant because the container can't change size. So in that case, your V1 and your V2 will have the same number. You can still use this equation, but your V1 and your V2 would be the same in the equation.